Hey, thanks for tuning in to Artwork Winona for the month of May. And it is a special month of things for you to take part in and to hear about. First up, we have a world premiere play that is kicking open the uh, newly renovated former Masonic Theater. We have Mr. James and Mr. Jeff. Then we have uh, the dynamic duo from the Minnesota Marine Art Museum here to talk about two blockbuster shows that you are not going to want to miss and their second Saturday program. Then we have Jerry Goodwin from Theater de Mississippi to talk about their 2020 season. And we have Christine Martin from the Minnesota Conservatory of the Arts and their tap dance program. Finally, we have Parker Forsell and the 10th anniversary of the Midwest Music Fest. And all of that is here for you on Artwork Winona for the month of May. We'll be right back to hear about it. Join me, Superintendent Rich Dahman, each month for interviews with administrators, district staff, and students. Tune in to Making the Grade, Monday through Friday, here on HBC TV 25, brought to you by Cost Cutters of Winona, located in the professional building in the Winona Mall Annex. We're really excited to start off the show this month with a segment about Mr. James and Mr. Jeff, a world premiere play that has to do with uh, a chapter of Winona history that's pretty intriguing. Tell us a little bit about it. This is Margaret Shaw Johnson, who is the playwright, mm -hmm. and Alfred Wilson, the director. So. So I am Margaret Johnson, and the play is Mr. James and Mr. Jeff. And as the title predicts, it's about two gentlemen whose names are James and Jeff. And these are two men who uh, lived in Winona a long time ago. They actually had been slaves uh, prior to the Civil War. And at the beginning of the war, they both escaped and made their way north to Winona. We don't often hear this chapter of Winona's history. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know that we had these visitors from the war-torn South uh, who came and made a life here in Winona. So I had known about the first one, Mr. James, James Stovall, for several years, and he intrigued me because Mr. James just really did business in this town. He took the town by storm. He, he became the one of the most storm. respected businessmen. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he taught himself to read and write. Um, he uh, came to Winona, opened a restaurant, and did extremely well. He became very wealthy, built a couple of really impressive downtown buildings, uh, became a philanthropist, he became very wealthy, a much-loved citizen. He was on the Board of Trade, he was on the Grand Jury. And then it's contrast <laughs> with the other side of the story, Exactly, Mr. Jeff. Tell us a little something about Jeff. Right. Uh, as I was researching James, I kept coming across uh, references to this other man who was more obscure. And he was mostly noted in the newspapers because people found him amusing. They made fun of him. And he was a street person, someone who had the same background or, or a similar background to James, but who did not succeed in this town. And I guess what my play is about really is it's about these men and their histories and their presence at the time in Winona in the 19th century. And it poses the question of what, can Winona claim any credit for James' success? And does it bear any, any blame for Jeff's failures? Mm. Now, uh, we haven't given uh, your director a chance to really say, did we describe the play pretty well, do you think? You described it the way that Margaret wrote it. Okay. It very, I mean, she's, the passion that she has for this play is amazing. So uh, I'm charged with making sure that that story gets told like she wants it told. And, but, and, and I think Winona will be excited to learn you have a pretty incredible uh, directing past. You come from Chicago, from I believe. I'm from Chicago. I'm mm -hmm. mostly an actor mm -hmm. and, and have directed in the past. And now I think I'm going to retire from the stage <laughs> <laughs> and get to this side. Well, I'll see you after this experience. But, but uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, interesting transition. You know? uh -huh. And uh, to start to do it with this play is really exciting. And, and I'm learning a lot about about, a, about history, period. Not just Winona's history, but Winona's history is the catalyst for me, knowing more about Reconstruction and, uh -huh. and how slavery happened. And you know, the, the curious thing for me was when Margaret called me about this, was how did two black men wind up in Winona, Minnesota? Uh -huh. So that's what I wanted to find out myself. You know, uh -huh. it was, and, and it was the, the, the uh, 
Louis Gates show of, of uh, reconstruction of uh -huh. how, you know, when, when slavery was over, blacks just spread out all the over the country. The diaspora of, and where and do they end up and where how do they, they end up? up how do they end up there? How do they make roots and yeah. build a life for themselves? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it runs when, Margaret? What are the dates? The dates are May 16, 17, 18, and 19. And we're really excited about getting into the Masonic. Uh -huh. And I should also say that the, pay, the play will feature uh, the two newly restored drop sets, the Forest scene and the Hades scene. And I also want to mention that the ticket revenues are all being donated to the restoration of the theater. It's a fundraiser for the theater project. So you get to see a great play, a world premiere play directed by this wonderful director, and you get to help out the uh, future of the Masonic. Absolutely. So we'll be back in just a minute with a short scene from the play. Be sure to check out US Golf TV where you are going to see golf products that you have never seen before. You're also going to see golf tips from some of the leading instructors around the country that are truly changing the way people are teaching the game and challenging the status quo. Also, you're going to see fitness tips that are revolutionizing the way PGA Tour pros are training their body and swinging the golf club. If you want something different, if you're looking for some new information, US Golf TV has it. Be sure to check your local listings. US Golf TV, we've got you covered. And we're back, we're going to hear a world premiere scene from Mr. James and Mr. Jeff. These actors, these wonderful actors, we've got Foster, what, you're laughing at wonderful you guys are, Foster Williams Jr. And we've got Henry Watkins, and they've only had the script for one rehearsal. So here we go, we're going to hear it, and it's a scene that takes place with uh, stacking wood, and you'll find out why in just a second, but it's the most important theme in the play, which is the difference between justice and the law. So here's a first look at a short scene from Mr. James and Mr. Jeff. Whoa, whoa there, Mr. Jeff. We're too old to be slinging wood around like that. Slow down, man. No, sir, no rest for the likes of me. Old Jeff been almost 300 years old, but Jesus and that mere man don't allow him to, uh, no rest at all. I'm working all day, working from can to cannot. Mayor Easterman, he paying you to do that? Paying me? <laughs> no, sir. I'm paying him. Him and his whole fish stinking town. I'm paying my debt to society. Debt? What debt? I broke the law. Couldn't pay a five cent fine, so I got two days of chopping wood for the mayor's office down City Hall. Lots of chopping for five cent or five cents fine. I can figure a little, you, you know, uh, they, learn, uh, they learn us to count this way. Uh, you broke the law. What did you do? Well, I set up my house down uh, along the river, uh, way down the end past the park behind an old fence. Folks walking along couldn't see without looking at it real hard. But who comes poking his nose around but the mayor walking along with his half a looting wife and that rat-faced little mutt? Uh, Jeff, he says, what you doing here? Uh, you're breaking the law. Breaking the law? How? He points at the board I got writing on it. He says, the sign says, keep off the grass. Violators will be prostituted. <laughs> That'd be prosecuted, I'd guess. So he got me prostituted, uh, or uh, what's that thing you say? And here I am. Well, you got to obey the law, you know. The law's the law. There ain't no law Jesus knows. Ain't right. What's a body to do? Sign don't tell me nothing. Does he, does he want me to uh, set my house down in the river? Be swept all the way uh, to New Orleans? I'm guilty without even knowing. Uh, it, it ain't right. An age-old dichotomy. Justice versus the law. Die. Die what? Um, it means sometimes the law says something is legal that doesn't seem fair. Like the law and justice are two different things. Oh, justice ain't no real thing. I heard about it, ain't never seen it. Just a, a, a ghost, a shade. An illusion. I ain't never seen it. You, you ever seen justice, Mr. James? Oh, now and again, I guess. Not the likes of us, huh, though? <laughs> Does seem to elude us somehow. Injustice. Now, injustice, that I seen. Injustice just means it ain't right. Uh, 
You seen injustice? Who dumped the wash water on your poor head? <laughs> Wondering where you can go to find great old movies? Well, look no further than HBC TV 25. Each week, TV 25 presents the HBC movie, and we won't monkey around. We'll show you movies like Night of the Living Dead, Giant Gila Monster, The Fat Spy, His Girl Friday, and others. Join us mornings at 12.30 a.m., and for those of you with better sleeping habits, Saturday afternoon at 2 on HBC TV 25 for the HBC movie. And we're back with the dynamic duo from the Minnesota Marine Art Museum. I couldn't be more excited to be talking with Dave Casey and John Swanson because in May there are two artists that can't, I, I can't believe they're going to be in Winona. So please tell us, John, about these two exhibits coming well, up. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for having us here today. We have opening in the beginning of May two exhibitions by two mid-career artists. One is a photographer, one is a painter. Both artists are at the height of their powers right now. They're both producing the best work of their lives. That's translated to a really big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, well, the, the, the first show is a, a painting show called Martin Placha, The Early History of the U.S. Navy. And Martin Placha is, may not be a household name to everyone, but in the world of marine art, globally, he is, uh, he's a superstar, he's a rock star. I'm very pleased to announce this exhibition of new work by him. Uh, these are 15 very large paintings looking at U.S. history, U.S. naval history. He is Dutch by birth and by training, uh, but he had visited the States as a child and really fell in love with uh, the story of the underdog, of the scrappy U.S. Navy with six vessels that took on the British mm -hmm. Royal mm -hmm. Navy with 200 available ships to fight, but they were spread thin, underestimated us during the Revolutionary War, and then later the War of 1812, uh, we really kind of changed naval history. Now, Placha, he is a former sailor. He was also in the Royal Netherlands Navy, so he understands his subject. But he goes the extra mile and does tons and tons of research on historical documents, written records, visual records, studies weather conditions, atmosphere, sky, wind, water, waves, technical mastery of all of the ships running and standing rigging and the sails. And he so combines is... all of these elements in to make the most accurate, dynamic, visually pleasing painting of these events. So this is marine art at its finest, Very which is so. really at the core of how the museum started, correct? Very much so. So, And he's also, you know, as an artist, as a painter, he is a painter's painter. He is he, technically amazing. Good. And then a whole different medium, someone just equally as exciting. Tell us about the photography. We are very proud to announce a photography exhibition by Alex Soth, uh, who is a Twin Cities-based photographer, but he's a global superstar. He is also in the height of his career. He's won every single award that you can win for photography. He's the youngest member of Magnum Photography Group. Mm -hmm. He has published 25 books. He's exhibited globally. The series that we're exhibiting, Sleeping by the Mississippi, started his career 14 years ago. Uh, from that, this is still going strong. It's, his book is in the fourth repressing. He just had a major showing of the same exhibition in London last year to critical and popular Wonderful re article reviews. in the New York yeah. Times about him very recently. I mean, he's as big a deal as you can get. He's, he's, he's yeah. as big a deal as you can get. He just happens to be from Minnesota. And through a lot of our hard work, we were able to uh, secure this exhibition and bring it to Winona. Well, we know how hard you work specifically to try to get the best we can <laughs> down here. So thank you for that. Mm. But there's this wonderful opportunity to see both of these exhibits in a special way, and Dave's going to talk about that. Yeah, our second Saturday program is the second Saturday of every month. I know, Lee, you've been there a few times. Mm -hmm. um, on top of a dollar admission, which is great, we have a lot of great things going on, um, tours, um, special art making activities and then each month there's a different theme and uh, May's theme for May 11th is color so it's a lot of fun Oh, wow, um, that should to be a lot color. of fun. Yep. Um, Sarah Johnson, who's a local artist and therapist, will be leading And very it. colorful herself. <laughs> and very colorful, yes, herself, physically and, uh, and spiritually and emotionally and, and, and everything. Um, she, she's going to be leading a color walk um, where she really connects um, 
participants through color in, in, the, in the museum. Um, there'll be a special color lounge with a lot of different hands-on activities. Very cool. Live music, um, a lot of other things going on. Yeah. We are so, so appreciative of the work that you guys do. And please give our love to Nicole and everyone at the museum. And we'll see you <laughs> at, at hopefully the openings and the second Saturday. Oh, thank you for your interest and support in the museum. Uh, we're, we're so thrilled to have you guys. And we'll be back in just a minute. Don't miss out on highlights and score updates from your favorite local college and high school athletics by following HBC TV 25 Sports. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get up-to-date information on all the games covered by the HBC Sports team. Grab your smartphone and add us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at HBC TV 25 Sports. And we're back with Jerry Goodwin, who is going to tell us a little something about Theater du Mississippi's upcoming season. Jerry is the acting executive director for the uh, organization and is also a member of the Fine Arts Commission uh, as coach, as vice president or vice chair? Vice chair. Vice, vice chair. chair. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah, the, uh, so we do have the season just announced. We sent out earlier this morning a press release to the <gasps> newspapers. Uh, the first up is going to be an adaptation of Chekhov's Three Sisters. The story originally is placed on the steppes of Russia, uh, and this story is going to be Fort Ripley, can uh, correction, Fort Ripley, Minnesota, oh. uh, which is in the northern part of the state. So we're bringing the story to, uh, to Minnesota. And it's really a story very easily transliterated over because just it's so much about the human condition as opposed to a place and time. So we're going to open the season with that and hopefully have a good bang to be able to show the community that we're still here. Followed immediately after that, uh, Halloween, October 25th, we're partnering with the Public Library to where we're going to be doing a night of horror. As soon as the library closes, we have a few minutes to get ready and then the library opens for us to put on the show. It's going to be stage readings of three of Poe's best, in my opinion. Uh, the Cask of Montalato, The Raven, and Telltale Heart. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to be having our traditional Christmas radio show that is going to be December 13th and 15th. We're still working the script for that, but it's promising to be a good show again this year. We're trying to return back to the roots of the show where there's a little bit more of an actual radio show mm -hmm. story. It's a story about a radio show as opposed to a radio show being the backdrop. So we're trying to return to that give the community something something awesome once again with it. The uh, short and sweet February 13th through 16th will be our Valentine's show. That way you have a wonderful evening to be able to take out your partner to a night on the town, have a nice meal at say the boathouse for example, and then come see a show with us to be able to round out the romantic evening. Then we have original shorts which we also have coming up right now as well but for next year we have it in process. We Every year we want to make sure that we're having scripts written by Winonans or mm -hmm. the Winona community and have these shows staged for the benefit of the community so we can be able to take pride in the fact that we have such a rich artistic backdrop in town that it's not just the visual arts, it's not just the music, but we have a wonderful performing arts community in town and a chance for people to see what it is our performing artists can do, not just acting but script writing as well. So we have that coming up. And just in general, we're hoping that this season will be one of our best in a while and be able to show the town that we do have a wonderful theater in town and give them a chance to come out and see a good show. So, Those all sound really great and really excited. I hope uh, so. Um, um, uh, how did the idea of the three sisters moving it to Minnesota come about? What was that? Was well, that an idea that you had had? Or? I'm a big fan of Chekhov uh -huh. in general anyway. My wife is Russian, so when I first met her, I started reading a lot uh, more Russian literature okay. just to try, to try to get into the mindset of my new in-laws. And so she'd give me a book of Chekhov's four best. And the one that I liked the most, honestly, was The Seagull. Mm -hmm. But when looking at it, and I'd like to be able to do something to bring these stories more to Americans because they are wonderful stories. And this one just seemed like the simplest to be able mm -hmm. to translate over because it's about a Russian army unit in the steppes of Tsarist Russia and these sisters that are trying to come to grips with their boredom in this small town. And well, no we don't point. know anything about small towns in no. Minnesota, no, and, and we certainly, you have a military background, so right. I'm sure that had something to do with it. Well, the, the story in general, it just it fits so well because the story, when it takes place, the, for those of you who are not familiar with the story, 
the the military unit is uh, is shutting doors and being able to move to a mm -hmm. different post and at the same time period that it happens in Three Sisters, the same thing happened at what is now Camp Ripley in the northern part of the state. So it just seemed like a very easy So there uh, was an actual parallel, historic parallel. Almost identical. That's amazing, very cool. We should be able to get a lot of people interested in just Minnesota history involved in that I'm too. hoping so. It's yeah. a good way to be able to help people see this beautiful, wonderful story that's from the outside world but doing it in a way to where it shows the community that there is something to be able to take pride in in this area. Well, that's great. We know the Theater to Mississippi has been around for quite some time. We're really excited about the next uh, season and the future of the organization, and we're so happy that you've sort of taken the, uh, the reins and giving it a, a, a little bit of a um, sort of a kick into the right. next century of it. So. Yeah, it's had too much history just to let it pass. It's 1997 that the organization was founded, mm -hmm. and that's just that's too much history just to let go. Mm -hmm. We need to keep it going. And I should just mention a special thanks to uh, Maggie Jockman who, and Will Kitchen, who, um, whose idea it was to start Theater in Mississippi, two wonderful people who helped um, so many uh, organizations happen in Winona, and just a special thanks right. to them. So. They are, uh, I, it's a shame I never got to meet Miss Jackman. She passed before I got here. Just an amazing, amazing human being. I've, I've so, heard that a lot. Yep. So, so anyway, hopefully we can be able to continue her legacy. Great, and bring your legacy along with it. I hope so. So um, thanks so much. Um, we'll be back in just a minute. Follow the National Circuit of the Pro Watercross Tour each week on Pro Watercross. It's not your average day at the beach. Featuring the best professional and amateur power sport athletes from around the world competing on the most beautiful beaches and venues in the USA on some of the most challenging and technical race courses in the world. Check out the high-speed thrills of Pro Watercross on HBC TV 25. And we're here with Christine Martin, who's an instructor, a dance instructor at the yes. Minnesota Conservatory of the Arts. She wears many hats in the community, <laughs> adjunct professor yes. at both universities and the administrative uh, 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 person with the uh, symphony orchestra. But you're here to talk about a special, special sequence of classes and an event centered around your love of tap dancing. So Absolutely. Tell us all about it, Christine. <laughs> um, so um, coming up this month now throughout May, um, we do something called National Tap Dance Day Workshops. And so we have all ages. We started as young as five years old. Um, and my oldest student in my adult class, I think, has turned 80, 80. Wow, we could so, break that. <laughs> right? We should be able to break that. <laughs> so all ages, um, adults, students, young moms, anyone who wants to try it is welcome to come try. Um, we have classes throughout uh, the month of May, and then they all kind of culminate in um, a showcase that we do on June 2nd. So. June 2nd will be the showcase. It it's a be. little bit after the National Tap Dance Day, but tell us a, something about that holiday, which I just learned about. Yes, so um, National Tap Dance Day is actually May 25th, and it um, was passed in Congress in 1989 as a real national holiday. Um, and that's in honor of Bill Bojangles Robinson's mm -hmm. birthday. We were just talking about some clips from Stormy Weather. Uh -huh. He's in that film with the great Nicholas Brothers. Uh -huh. So um, part of what we'll do for the showcase is a little bit of tap history. So of course you'll get to see all the wonderful students performing pieces as well. Um, but we'll also include a little bit of that history part in the showcase for the audience to learn about. Great, so, so now they can register for these classes. You can visit the uh, website, I'm assuming, for the Minnesota yes. Conservatory for the Arts? Correct, exactly. And, and um, workshops have just gotten started now. Mm -hmm. um, students are always welcome to start and come in. Um, and then the showcase is free and open to the public. Wow. Um, we received a, a grant from the um, Walmart Community Grant Foundation, so um, that's helpful to support that as well. And um, there just can't be any more joyous art form than TAP. It's true, and, it's um, true. It's really wonderful that Winona and the Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts is keeping it alive and teaching it to the next generation. So we thank you so much for that. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, the date, one more time for those? Uh, Sunday, June 2nd is our showcase at 3 p.m. Um, that's at the Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts Valencia Art Center. We are on the corner of 10th and Vila Streets on the old St. Teresa campus. And the showcase is free and open to the public. It will include the showcase as well as a little mini lesson for anyone Ooh. who wants to learn at the end. But now everyone that is watching the show <laughs> will have already registered for those 
workshops, <laughs> and we will have the largest <laughs> tap dancing exhibition that you guys have ever had. That right? would be fantastic. That would be awesome <laughs> and super cool. So get up off the couch right now and register to go tap dance. We'll see you at Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts. What's a Southern girl? It's waking up before the sun rises. It's loving the simple things in life like the dirt roads that lead you home. It's working hard to get what you want. It's hanging your own stands, breaking your own ground, and strategizing every little move for that one moment when everything you've worked for is standing right in front of you. Even if I fail a million times, I keep pushing myself till I'm exhausted, filthy, and about to give up. And that's when the adrenaline hits. And we're here with Parker Forsell from the, are you director of director Menace, Midwest, Midwest Music, Music Fest? Fest? and also just a great promoter and uh, musician and music lover in town. And you're here on the, what anniversary of this incredible tenth. festival? It's gonna be the 10th annual now. Midwest Music Fest excited. this year. The 10th! The 10th annual, yeah. Uh, okay, and how many years have you been with the festival? This is my sixth. Your sixth year? Tell us what's new, exciting, besides this incredible Yeti uh, uh, person <laughs> who's been helping promote. Yeah, well, what's really cool is we're gonna be on the levee. You know, you uh -huh. kind of broke broke the levee doing the live at the levees, and uh, we were part of one of those, uh -huh. and just uh, decided it was a great opportunity to move the People festival right down People are gonna right think it's actually river. broken now. What you meant is broke in. <laughs> broke <right>? in. <laughs> we didn't actually break the levee. Um, but I'm really excited that you're yeah. gonna be able to participate. Um, and the Masonic, I think it's gonna be the first event back at the Masonic. And you're gonna kick open the doors, the Masonic, right, so. of the Masonic. And you're back at all the venues that people love, to the Eagles and the uh, right. uh, Eds. Yeah, for people that right. don't know, it's multi venues uh -huh. all over all over town, and then one wristband ticket gets you into any of the venues that you want. How many bands? Sixty bands over the two days. Sixty it's bands just over two. Bucks a day. I mean, come on, twenty-five dollars for sixty bands over two days, and then you can turn right around and support the event in Lacrosse the following week, right? Right. So, so yeah, it's the fourth year that we're doing it down in Lacrosse, and we're doing an outdoor stage for the first time there this year because oh, we wow. moved it back a whole month into May so that we could do something outdoors there, and we're going to be at the Oktoberfest grounds in Lacrosse. That's great. That's great. So who are the headliners here in Winona? Who are the folks? Well, that there's a you know we're always doing multi. Genre, uh -huh. so everything from kind of them coolie boys doing bluegrass mm -hmm. to uh, Afro-Cuban 12-piece band from Milwaukee called De La Buena to oh, we have they're amazing. some hip-hop guys from Minneapolis and Chicago will uh -huh. be involved and uh, yeah we're doing some different showcases they're gonna be a uke fest at the Alexander Mansion this year uh -huh. which is something different and then we're also doing a videotaped session at Burke's Music House. The Current's going to be there and Tree Dome's going to be videoing and a recording studio out of Rochester is going to record solo sets by three different women artists. Yeah, there's a big program, right, that's centered around women artists one night. Is that right? Is there, this that's, the one? That's the showcase. Uh -huh. It's on Saturday afternoon, actually. And oh, it's free okay. and open to the public. So if you just want to check it out. And who are out, the women that are in that showcase? Uh, Humbird, Annie uh -huh. Mack, and Abby Wolf. I mean, free? You get to yeah. see those three artists? Yeah. That's amazing. And it's the afternoon, so I mean, there's there are some different free venues. If you uh -huh. just want to check it out and maybe you like it, then you can go get a ticket and uh -huh. go the whole rest of the night. Tell me a little bit uh, about the educational aspects. I know that over the years you've been doing some things where you're helping younger artists. Yeah, we've done a lot with the schools. One of the main things that's continued to go is called Teen Press. That's uh -huh. something that kind of happened through, originally the Frozen River Film Festival had brought someone out here that was doing Teen Press, and then we helped a couple schools schools turn it into music press and so students have been interviewing every year videotaping doing stories about some of the artists playing the fest and that'll be going on again and then because of the levy being more of a park like setting we're going to have some more children slash old adult type children performers a guy that breathes fire and uh, lays on a bed of nails and there's another guy that's bringing this solar powered suitcase that has all these different contraptions in it where he can record kids right there live on the spot and play it back to them and create like a little band setting all together and then Dr. Bob's always been involved with our events doing mm -hmm. his puppets in puppet theater. So this is the first week of May so a lot of people may be seeing this after they've missed the first week of May mm -hmm. but then the second week of May you still have a chance to see it in lacrosse. Third week. Third, third week. week. May. Yep. So so you know same deal got... same pricing eight different venues. So come out it's the Midwest Music Fest it's their 10th anniversary Parker's put together a heck of a lineup. You can't have a bad time at this festival. It's impossible, you'd have to work hard. So we'll see you there.